Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's Zerto webinar. It's around simple, fast, and risk-free migrations with Zerto. We have a couple of people joining us, so we're going to spend about a minute waiting. So if you all put ourselves on mute, and we will come back in one minute and get started. Excited to have you here. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. For those who just joined, you joined the, the Zerto webinar titled Simple, Fast, and Risk-Free Migrations with Zerto. Before we get started, a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, I know that everyone always asks this question. So this uh, webinar is going to be recorded and these slides will be available afterwards. You'll receive a link to the on-demand webinar uh, a couple of hours after the webinar ends. So you'll be able to send this to colleagues if it's of interest to you, or you'll be able to rewatch it, kind of take the slides in as well. Um, another point as well, if you have any questions, go to your go to webinar control panel, click the questions tab, and we will make sure to address them throughout the entire session. If we're not able to answer them during the session, we will make sure to answer them at the end. Feel free. There is no question we won't answer and we welcome anything. We really do appreciate the interest there. So with that in mind, let's get started. My name is Andy Fernandez. I'm a senior manager of product marketing here at Zerto, a Hewlett Packard enterprise company. I'm also joined by Chris Rogers, who's our technology evangelist here at Zerto as well. So let's get started. So before we get started, I, I know that there are a couple of us who might be new to Zerto, really understanding what we do. So at the high level, what Zerto does is we protect, recover, and move data and applications for continuous availability across on-premises, hybrid, and multi-cloud environments. We were established in 2009. We have offices in the US and Israel. We have over 1,500 technology partners. This includes our alliances like Microsoft, Amazon, IBM, but we also have a global network of managed service providers of over 350 of those providers. We have over 9,500 customers in over 100 countries. And the most important part here too of what Zerto does is, out of those 9,500 customers that we have, they protect us. They use us to protect the most critical applications in their environments. What powers their business? For example, United Airlines that you see on the top right, they trust Zerto to be able to replicate, to protect, and to recover the applications that run their website, that run their web apps, and give them the ability to conduct business. If United goes down for an hour, they lose exactly $1 million. So it just kind of shows you the level of trust that organizations have in Zerto just to protect their data. But that trust also extends to the ability or our ability to be able to migrate workloads as well. But let's talk about that a little bit. What are, what are some of the challenges that organizations are facing these days? So if we go on to the next slide. So when we talk about the customer challenges that we talk, we see through, these are challenges that we see our own customers have had in the past or people in the field that we, we have these conversations and we really get an understanding of what is every IT organization going through today, regardless if it's a startup, regardless if it's an enterprise or a Fortune 500 organization. There are a lot of underlying challenges. One massive challenge is ransomware. We know that ransomware is not only increasing in volume, so, for example, last, last year, the average span between ransomware attacks globally was every 11 seconds. In a decade, that'll be every two seconds. The average cost or the estimated cost of ransomware last year was anywhere from 20 to $25 billion. In a decade, that will 10x. So we know that ransomware is getting more sophisticated. It's getting stronger, and it's moving on from just being a backup scenario to a DR scenario. So organizations have already had disruption pain points, downtime pain points in the past. Adding ransomware to that only adds more pressure. Then comes cloud complexity. Not only are organizations expected to maintain availability, keep the lights on, be able to mitigate the risk of ransomware attacks, but they're also expected to use their infrastructure or also adopt the cloud. This could be anything from, we want to move disaster recovery and backup operations to the cloud, we want to adopt containerized applications for our development, or we want to be able to run production in the cloud. Now, there's a lot of value to unlock there, but a lot of that complexity can have potential pitfalls if the organization is not doing so with the right tools. 
So when you put all of these challenges of ransomware, downtime, disruption, uh, expectations around moving to the cloud and then unlocking new complexity, when you combine all of that with the fact that more than ever, organizations are expecting aggressive SLAs. If you think about consumer behavior these days, uh, we talk to customers all the time and they tell us, you know, if we're not able to load specific application services, specific sites uh, within three seconds, we will see a drop off in our customers and they will go to our competition. And that behavior goes into healthcare. That behavior goes into financial organizations, into e-commerce, into retail. And what that means is that more than ever, there's a lot of pressure in IT departments, not only to keep the lights on, but to even increase the availability that they have. This can get very complex. So let's move on to the next slide. And so when we think about managing that complexity, let's actually break it down to specific actions that most infrastructure and operations organizations have to do. Number one, you have your backup scenarios. People are always going to be deleting data. They're gonna be deleting, there's gonna be corruptions. You need to be able to restore files and folders rapidly. Then you also, you know, because of regulatory or compliance reasons, you need to be able to recover files or folders from long-term retention. That kind of covers, you know, the, the, the backup responsibilities that organizations have. Then you also have DR events. That is outages, natural disasters, hardware failures. We consider ransomware a DR scenario as well. These are very dangerous. They don't happen always, um, but they do introduce a lot of disruption, a lot of risk. So these are a lot of the day-to-day the -day activities, the threats that emerge, and then you get into also what are some of the activities you have to perform. Maybe your organization has gone through an acquisition and you have to merge data centers. Maybe you're simply refreshing your infrastructure and going through modernization. Or maybe you are expected to move to the cloud, right? You wanna move from being a CapEx organization to OpEx. So with all this in mind, what does this actually mean for your user experience as an IT manager, as an IT director, as an admin? What does that mean? Well, let's talk about what that looks like in the tools required to achieve all of these responsibilities. Now I'm calling this a legacy data protection stack. Um, but let's think about the journeys that customers take through this. So maybe seven, eight years ago, you had your on-premise site and you had a secondary site somewhere. Let's say we, you know, we started in Miami, the primary data center, and you have one in Tampa, but it could be anywhere in the world, but that's just an example. Originally, you know, you had your backups. You needed to have a backup solution in order to make sure that you were compliant, that you could recover this data. But because natural disasters are serious, because outages are serious, maybe because ransomware has been a threat, maybe your organization has been attacked before, you needed a disaster recovery tool or solution as well. So you're managing a backup solution. You're also managing a DR solution to protect data, but in a different way. And you're using this maybe a, a solution like Recover Points, where you have your primary data center and you have to have homogeneous infrastructure on the other side, and you can just perform a replication there, pretty basic stuff. But then you also have, you know, let's say it's a combo, let's say it's a Veeam, a rubric, a cohesity on the backup side. But you realize that your organization required more orchestration and automation, need more sophisticated abilities to proactively fail over data. So you brought in a solution like SRM. So think about it, just in order to be able to protect your data, you're dealing with a DR solution, a backup solution, an orchestration and automation solution. And then you're expected to maybe move to the cloud or you know migrate data centers. But let's say you're asked to go to Azure or AWS, then you need to be able to have a solution that also allows you to migrate to the public cloud. And maybe the, the DR solution that you had can help you protect on-premises, but it can't help you protect cloud workloads. So maybe you have to inherit or use an, and adopt an, yet another solution to do that. So what this means is that as we adopt new applications, as we adopt new infrastructure models and target sites, we can see a pretty aggressive sprawl of solutions. And what that means is you're dealing with multiple UIs, you're dealing with having to train and specialize on each of these. And think of the administrative overhead that that causes. You're talking about time, resources, and on installation, management, configurations, and upgrade. And then you add a layer of complexity around licensing and pricing where you're facing renewals for this this year, renewals for that, and things get much more expensive and they're licensed some on VMs. 
some on storage, some on the applications, some, some on the hardware itself. This is too much. This makes keeping the lights on much more difficult than it should be. And that's a problem. So if we move to the next slide, we need to talk through as an organization in order to really succeed, not only to remain resilient, to keep the lights on, but also improve your SLAs and be able to achieve availability, but not just on premise, but be able to do it with the exact infrastructure strategy that you may have. You need to think about your requirements from edge to cloud. Number one thing that you need is to be continuously available. It doesn't matter where your apps or data are located that you're able to protect it. And if a disruption hap event does happen, you need to be able to recover quickly and at scale with confidence. Not only do you have to minimize the disruption, but you have to also minimize the data loss as well. And however you are protecting, but also migrating the solutions that you or the workloads that you have, you need to do it with an application centric uh, in mind, being able to not do things on a per VM basis, but actually move your applications as a whole. And we'll talk a little bit through, and, and Chris is gonna break down how Zerto does that via technology as well. Um, but the other piece that we've talked about is you need consumer level simplicity that's brought to IT department where it is easy to perform these tasks to do so because the more we know that the more tools you introduce, the more risk there is. And on top of all of this, this needs to be hardware agnostic. You need to be able to protect the data that you have regardless of where it is stored. That is absolutely crucial. So with that in mind, we're going to get into a couple of details around how to migrate data, what are the benefits, what are the challenges that organizations face, and then we're going to talk about how Zerto is able to make that a non-disruptive, a risk-free, a simple, and a fast experience. But in order to understand our differentiation and how you can truly migrate quickly and risk-free, you need to understand how we protect this data, because that's a critical component as well, that you're protected along with your migration activities. And what Zerto does better than anybody else, and we've been a leader in this space, is in delivering continuous data protection. But what does that actually mean? What does continuous data protection entail? Well, first and foremost, one of the most important parts is how do you treat this data? Do you copy this data using VM snapshots as a DR solution, or do you replicate it? Zerto does near synchronous replication. This is block level replication at the hypervisor level. There's no production impact. There's no scheduling, no snapshots, no agents. Most importantly here, and this is gonna apply specifically on the migration side, Zerto is hardware and storage agnostic. This means that wherever you deploy Zerto, being a software only agentless installation, it will protect and replicate your virtualized and containerized workloads. So this gives you a lot of flexibility. You're no longer tied to, I have this hardware vendor, therefore I need this DR solution or this migration solution. Zerto frees you from all that and lets you pick the infrastructure that works best for you. But you know, creating thousands of recovery points a day and being able to recover them very quickly is important. And that's how we solve for it from a replication perspective. But this is more crucial than ever, especially within the context of migrations. And it is, how do we treat applications? The competition, the, the industry standard before is we will back up and we will recover things on a per VM basis. But guess what? The majority of enterprise applications, these are multi VM applications. And in order to recover them consistently and get them to work and get back up and running, you need to be able to recover the entire application stack as a cohesive unit to a specific checkpoint. Zerto has what we call virtual protection groups. These virtual protection groups, basically what this means is you're able to allocate all of the VMs that belong to your enterprise application. And Zerto will start protecting them and replicating them at an exact checkpoint, all consistently with right order fidelity across the entire multi-VM application stack. No more staggered backup windows, no more days or even weeks of RTOs because you're trying to rebuild file directories. Zerto makes that a much more simple endeavor saves you a lot of time, but also allows you to remain available as well. And this is this next one is very crucial to the migration story that we're gonna cover. And it is, how do you move and orchestrate these workloads? Like I said before, a lot of the solutions that we've seen in the past around legacy DR is, I need one solution that allows me to be able to replicate to another site. 
then I need a solution that all allows me to also orchestrate and perform more um, sophisticated endeavors. Zerto has built-in orchestration and automation. This is easy. It's interoperable with your existing tech stack. But most importantly, what this does is that Zerto allows you to perform a failover, a failback, a recovery, a move operation, just within a couple of clicks. We don't need to do an entire demo video. I can simply just show you a GIF of how this is able to work. And this is a true differentiator here on how to be able to perform these migrations simply. But another important piece here, and I think anybody who's tried to migrate to the public cloud understands really well, is scale. Zerto is a scale out architecture, a simple, easy deployment that allows you to scale and protect or move 10 VMs, 1,000 VMs or more. We see a lot of these native migration offerings in the public cloud not perform as well after 30, 40, 50 VMs. And as a large organization, as an enterprise, you need a solution that can not only protect at scale, but it can also move at scale. So with that in mind, I wanna talk a little bit about what are the actual challenges that we see with migrations, right? Now you understand why data protection is important in the context of migration. You understand what are the data protection solutions that you need. But now when we look at the challenges of migrations, Number one challenge is there's a lot of risk involved. When you're not using the right tools, when you're not planning correctly, there's a potential to introduce data loss. It could be very disruptive. And these lengthy migration periods could, could be very disruptive to the organization. Maybe you have a data center exit strategy. Maybe you are moving into Azure, AWS. Maybe it's a service provider. Uh, the longer you take, the more not only are you delaying the benefits, but you're also in introducing a lot of administrative overhead. For organizations that maybe are performing migrations for the first time, there's a lot of time on education, resources, even bringing in additional third parties in order to truly understand how do we do this effectively? How do we do this without downtime or without data loss? So it's very difficult to do that with low administrative overhead. A major concern as well are migrations. Uh, are with migrations are being locked into specific hardware or being locked into a specific vendor. For example, if I go to the public cloud, it's very easy perhaps for me to get there, but can I get out if I don't really see the value that I want, or maybe I wanna have a multi-cloud strategy? That could be a significant challenge for a lot of organizations. And you have to make sure that whatever solution you use to get in somewhere allows you to also get out. And another sometimes overlooked pain point is testing. How do you know that what you've planned for will happen if you've never actually tested the move operation, if you've never tested a true migration operation? How can you do that? Well, the reason is a lot of these solutions um, don't have the best testing measures and they're very disruptive. So organizations are not always incentivized to perform these tests. So now that we've got an understanding of a lot of the legacy pain points that we have, um, and, and the pain points around migration, I want to transition over on really covering how Zerto is able to help you on migrations, whether that is consolidating data centers, modernizing on-premise infrastructure, or going to the cloud. I'm gonna introduce Chris Rogers again, who's gonna be able to really dive in into how Zerto is able to solve for this. Thank you very much, Andy. Hope everyone can hear me loud and clear. And uh, thank you for your time and thanks for the insights so far, Andy. So, yeah, so as Andy says, I'm going to be diving into um, some of the technology and some of the use cases around Zerto for migrations. So let's get started straight away. So one thing that Zerto has that, that no other um, vendor has on the marketplace, which really kind of amplifies our message about migrations, is one-to-many replication. So I think this is a huge um, facet to people's migration strategies now is a being able to de-risk your migration, right? So whilst we're replicating data to um, the secondary site or the target site for migration, we can then also introduce a tertiary site or or, or a third party site like a, um, a service provider or, or, or a secondary public cloud. So whilst that migration is ongoing, you can still maintain protection in a, in, a, in a third party environment as well. So it's kind of giving you that the best of both worlds. So whilst Deserto is moving your data to one cloud for that migration strategy, we can then also protect that into a separate cloud or, or the same cloud if you wish, just to give you that extra level of, of protection. I think that the other way, the other thing I love about the, the one to many is we can actually precede two locations at the same time. So we can replicate into, you know, let's say 
Azure Region A and also replicate into Azure Region B at the same time using one to many. That means once your migration then takes place, we've got the majority of the data already in your secondary location. So when you then want to trigger your disaster recovery between Azure Re or sorry, between AWS Region A and B, most of the data is already there again. And that's the same for on-premises as well. If you were doing a new um, um, a migration between on-premises or two new data centers or anything else like that, we can precede those locations. So it's going to minimize the downtime and minimize the risk of you being without protection after the migration as well. So that's really, really crucial, I think. I know Andy mentioned this um, earlier, but migrating applications as a single entity or as a whole entity, I think is incredibly important. Not only does it give you amazing you know, migration times and everything else like that, because everything is exactly the same from the same point in time, but we can also do a staggered migration approach if we wanted to. We could take an application at a time knowing that we can just click the move or the migrate button on, on just that one application or a selection of applications at a time. And we guarantee zero data loss on our moves as well. So we can guarantee zero RPO on a single application or a whole site if you wanted to do as well. So I think um, you know, migrating all the applications as a single entity, I think is such a great use case for Zerto. Make sure everything's in time. It's going to minimize the checks we need to do afterwards because we know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to spin up and it's going to be from exactly the same point in time. So I want to show you kind of what happens behind the scenes in the migration process and kind of give you an idea of, of why Zerto is so good at migrations and why it is such a good uh, use case for, for people to, to use Zerto for migrating to public cloud in between infrastructures or you know any type of migration really. So what, what do we do? We start off with the initial replication. So that's a background task. So anyone who knows Zerto knows that we have no impact on production. We use don't use snapshots. We have no agents inside the OS. So it has zero production impact doing that replication. So we start that initial replication. So once we've got the initial you know, base disk or the seed or the replica of what that VM looked like, whilst we're planning for the migration, we have continuous data protection occurring, right? So we're gonna be potentially five to 10 seconds behind production on every single one of those virtual machines in those virtual protection groups that make up your applications. So even if you wanna set it up a month, two months, three months, whatever it is before, or even a few days beforehand, we're only gonna be five or 10 seconds behind at any one point in time. That means you can kind of emphasize whenever you want to do your migrations, you're always going to be ready because even if you decide to bring a migration window forward, we're only going to be five or 10 seconds behind. So once the migration timing is set, so we put that migration you know, back into your hands. You choose when you want to do the migration, not when the tool lets you do it or not when the, it's at the most up to date. We're always going to be five or 10 seconds behind. So once you've decided when you want to do your migration, whether it's the whole site, a single application, whatever it may be, you then essentially move using Zerto. So we have a dedicated move orchestration workflow, an automation workflow. So it's you click the move button, you choose the virtual protection group you want to move, you choose where you're moving it to. And then once you've done that, Zerto takes care of the rest. So essentially what Zerto is going to do is those source virtual machines that you want to move are then shut down gracefully. The last five, 10 seconds of IO is then flushed down to disk. We then replicate that small tiny bit of data to the other side. Once we've then caught up, which is only going to be a few seconds, we then insert the checkpoint into the journal. And that is the point in time that we use for the migration. Then when we recover, we recover to that checkpoint on the target side, meaning there is zero data loss. So we guarantee zero data loss because the VMs are shut down. So we take care of all of that problem. And then at the point that you uh, want to want to spin up again, all the data is already migrated, right? So we don't have to wait for large data migrations to happen for the, for the migration to be successful. We just need that last few seconds of data to move across, which is going to take you know no no time at all. And as you know, with Zerto, we orchestrate and automate everything coming up again, so we can be up in just a few minutes with no data loss at all, which is absolutely phenomenal. And I think one of the key points here, and I haven't put on the slide because there would have been far too many steps and it would look like a very complicated flowchart afterwards. But at the point that those VMs are bought up, at that point in time, you actually have the choice then to kind of commit forward and say, yeah, this migration has gone perfectly, exactly as planned. I would like to commit. But you also have the opportunity to then investigate your virtual machines and actually say, no, something's not quite right. The timing's not right. Or we've got a big user impact that we, re that we didn't realize on, upon testing, whatever it may have been. And actually, I like to roll back, and then Zerto is able to 
automated again and orchestrated, undo all the steps we've just done and power on those machines back at production for you within minutes again. So even if a migration does go wrong, it's not going to cause lengthy outages and lengthy amounts of downtime. So let's move on to testing and reporting. So I know Andy uh, mentioned testing earlier, but I think testing migrations is one of those things that gets overlooked on a regular basis. You know, we're so used to things like vMotion and storage vMotion kind of being, well, I click the task and it just takes as long as it takes, right? It just happens and I don't really have any control over it. I can't do a test vMotion. I can't, can't do anything else like that. So we're kind of just used to that kind of hit and hope strategy. Whereas actually with Zerto, with the, the failover test um, workflow, we can test within three or four clicks and fail those virtual machines over in an isolated environment away from production with zero impact. So we can do this as many times as we like to make sure we've got things like boot order correct, we've got the application ordering correct, we've got the times between the VMs booting correct, You know, making sure that the point in time that we want to move to is correct. We can understand roughly how long those VMs are gonna to take to come up inside of a public cloud, for instance. So we can really fine tune our migration strategy with non-impactful testing. And then we get that effective test the migration. So if, if the, you know, the C-level execs are saying, well, how long is it going to take you to migrate these 500 VMs? We're going to know we've got to give a very accurate answer. Well, on our testing, it took between five minutes and 10 minutes or between half an hour and an hour for those thousand virtual machines. Whatever it may be, we can give that very, very accurate estimation. So you know when you're, you're scheduling your actual real life migration, you know not to schedule four weeks when you know it's only going to take an afternoon to do. And this then helps you validate processes, as I said before, making sure things come up in the right order, uh, making sure that the, the services start correctly and, and in, in the right time frames as well. And then we can also identify missing dependencies, right? So we can figure out if we've missed a VM from the application stack. Very easily done, you know, if, we, if, it, if a dependency isn't mapped properly or something along those lines. We can understand if the migration hasn't gone quite to plan on our testing. Well, that's not a big deal because that's what tests are there for to try and figure out if we've got anything that we need to improve upon. And then lastly, the most important one is the validating the migration time window. Again, instead of scheduling four weekends or you know the next five weekends for over the over the holiday period for migrations, we know roughly how long it's going to take. And yes, we could build in some contingency to just in case something doesn't go quite as planned. But you know, with Zerto, as I mentioned earlier, we have that rollback just in case things don't go to the plan. But you can really, you know, down to the kind of the minute, understand roughly how long that uh, that migration is going to take. So. Why would people use Zertif migrations? Well, hopefully I've covered most of that in what we've spoken about, but we give you full confidence with risk-free migrations with all the testings and guaranteed zero data loss as well. We give you fast, flexible migrations. As I mentioned before, we're not moving data during the migration process, but the majority of the data is already um, at the target site. So it's only that last few seconds that we need to update. So we're giving you that very, very quick migration, but also flexible. So you can do the applications you want to do when you want to do them. You don't have to do full sites. And you don't have to do individual VMs. It gives you the flexibility to choose what you migrate, when you, might, when you migrate as well. Hardware and cloud agnostic. So being able to replicate and migrate to wherever you want to go, not wherever your tool set determines you have to go. You know, if you've got a cloud first strategy, you could go to Azure and AWS if you wanted to. Right, you could migrate between Azure and AWS using Zerto. If you wanted to just to go between hardware platforms, that's a perfectly acceptable as well, right? Not everyone is going to the public cloud. So it's completely agnostic to give you that freedom and flexibility and choice to make sure that the tooling isn't driving your strategy, but your strategy is driving the correct tooling for the job. And then non-disruptive migrations. You know, we can test often and then therefore build confidence in with that. So I think testing is really important. And I think that's the same throughout. I think every webinar you've probably been on at Zerto has always mentioned testing because testing is such a, a crucial thing when it comes to data, making sure data comes up as we expect it in the right timeframes when we expect it as well. And I love this quote from, from Ron Blair from Gartner um, when, we showed, when we showed him the, uh, the, the migration capabilities of Zerto and he said, oh, no one can do it better, right? And I, and I totally agree with that. I don't think anyone can do migrations better than Zerto. So if we look at the the kind of the the hybrid cloud or the modern cloud kind of um, landscape today, we've got all of these different areas that we can work in, right? We've got on-premises, we've got public cloud native, we've got VMware on public cloud, we've got cloud native, you know, um, things like Tanzu and, and EKS and AKS from in Kubernetes. We've got on-premises hybrid cloud as services from HP GreenLake. We've got all these options, MSPs, you know, loads of options that we can choose on a hybrid cloud landscape. So how do we figure out what's best for us and how do we figure out whether we can migrate to those or not? So I'm going to take a few of these and show you how Zerto can help you with this. 
So if we take infrastructure modernization, it's something that most of us have all experienced in our life cycles, you know, managing, um, you know, the, the movement from our five or 10 year old tin onto the new tin. We get the new tin delivered six months ahead before we need it. So we're already wasting warranty because we're, we're scared that we're not going to be able to migrate quickly enough so we get it in as ahead of time or you know and at the moment that's really hard to get um, tin and hardware in because you know the, the chip shortage worldwide so how do we make sure that once once we've got the tin on site and it's configured we can move our workloads onto it as quickly as possible to utilize the new hardware platform the new investment so as we said we've got the on-premises so we just move from hardware agnostic vmware to hyper-v to wherever else we might want to go you can do that with Zerto. So if it's on-premises, for instance, that's fine. You know, we've got that even within your own data center, even if it's just a pure logical migration. You know, I've used Zerto before to migrate from a vSphere 5.5 instance up to a vSphere 6 or 7 instance because I couldn't really do it particularly well with, with inbuilt tools. So I used, used the migrate function. So it doesn't have to just be hardware. It can be logical also. Also, if you're using um, for to, Zerto to consolidate data centers. So if you, you know, if you want to move into different... Um, over different data center locations or mergers and acquisitions and you, you need to consolidate data centers down. We're seeing a huge um, kind of escape from the data center, if you will. People don't want to run their own data center, data center anymore. They maybe want to one, run one of their as their primary and then public cloud as their secondary, or they don't want to be running five or six around the world. They want to be running two or three. So how do you consolidate? Well, you can migrate all your workloads into those either one or two or three data centers you had using Zerto as well. And then if you're using that hybrid cloud, you know, that the, you know, the Green Lake services and that type of thing, we're actually migrating onto the new hardware. It's going to be great using Zerto as well. So kind of no matter where you're looking to move with on premises or with infrastructure modernization or logical migrations, Zerto is going to be able to achieve that. So I've got a few customer success slides I want to run through just to kind of show you what real life customers have done, because obviously it's fine listening to me and Andy on the webinar, but actually having real life customers and telling you what they've managed to achieve, I think is much more valuable. So, so XPO Logistics, they managed to consolidate 21 data centers down to just six in only 36 months. So that was a growth by acquisition, acquisition strategy. Um, and their fastest data center consolidation was completed in only 30 days of Zerto. And the migration was so successful with, with Zerto and XPO Logistics, they actually bought more Zerto for, for disaster recovery as well. So utilizing more than one use case for, for Zerto in, in their licensing as well. So then they, they managed to reduce their RPOs from 24 hours down to 20 seconds and their RTOs from 25 hours to 15 minutes. So again, not just the migration um, good use case there, but also a great DR story as well. So you know, showing Zerto is not just a migration tool or isn't just for disaster recovery, it can be very powerful both combined as well. Then Aaron's, big retailer in the US. So they, they migrate, migrated over 100 applications within a three month period. And they actually told us it was four times quicker than any other previous migration method they'd used. And they, again, it was a claim to fame, their fastest migration was performed in only 30 minutes. So that's really, really driving the business forward and maintaining operational um, uptime when you've got a migration that only lasts 30 minutes. And the last one is, is a bit of a different use case for, um, for migrations. So, so Spirit Airlines actually proactively migrate their workloads. So every every three months, every six months, I think maybe tw twice or three times a year, they actually proactively migrate their workloads out of the risk of things like natural disasters, so hurricanes and tornadoes and things like that. So they'll proactively move workloads around. And they know they can do this and trust it without any impact to their organization because they can move all their critical applications in less than three hours to their new site, meaning that they can plan a small window of downtime if they need to and move all of, that, all of those applications out of harm's way, which massively reduces the risk of downtime, which can cost them, you know, half a million dollars an hour. So imagine if, you know, if, if they've got a, a downtime window and it takes them 12 hours to recover from a hurricane, that's a huge amount of money that they've lost. So they proactively migrate, which is another great use case. You know, you can massively de-risk by moving your workloads out of harm's way if you needed to. And again, they had zero errors and performed migration ahead of the expected timeline using Zerto. So if we're looking at two from and between the clouds, so a lot of people are looking to move, you know, to from and between public clouds or private clouds or, or, or MSPs clouds. So, so again, as we look at this this one here, so we've got you know intercloud DR and mobility with Zerto, so being able to you know move workloads between AWS and Azure, doing intercloud DR between AWS and MSP, so you know using Zerto in cloud. Um, for disaster recovery can help you do, do that as well. We can help you migrate workloads between Kubernetes environments. So maybe you went all hell for lever on Google Cloud for your Kubernetes environment, and actually your company then had a mandate to say everything needs to be moved to, uh, to Amazon. 
how would you then migrate all that, that Kubernetes workload? We can help you with, with, with Zerto for Kubernetes and, and dedicated cloud native CDP. So in all of these areas, you can see we've got a really great migration story or, to, or, a, or a recovery story to kind of guide you in your journey. And this isn't just about picking one or two of these, right? This is about saying, well, Zerto can help you across this whole spectrum. So maybe Zerto today is, you know, you doing DR to the cloud or you doing migration to cloud for certain instances. But in six months time, a year's time, that investment can then pay off when you're when a mandate says that we need to migrate everything into public cloud or we need to migrate into a different public cloud. Or actually, we want to we want to repatriate some of those workloads back onto on premises again, because we didn't really expect the public cloud to be so expensive or be as complex as we thought it was going to be. So Zerto can help you in all of these different places, making sure your investment isn't just a one time use case. It can help you from now and into the future as well. So this is, this is the same for Maritz as well. So nice uh, science and art, people potential, their tagline, I love that tagline. So they use Zerto for both DR and migrations, which again is a, a, thing, a common theme we've seen for a lot of our customers. They use Zerto for disaster recovery and for migrations because it works so well for both. But they realized that they can save a hell of a lot of money if they were actually migrating workloads to AWS because they did disaster recovery, first of all, with um, Zerto into AWS. They realized it worked seamlessly. So they could migrate work workloads into AWS in an automated manner with minimal configuration changes. And that then gave them the confidence they knew how to do that migration properly. So they saved themselves about 40% while using Zerto to migrate into the public cloud. And then if we look at AWS specifically, if we look at all the use cases we just, just have just around AWS or just around public cloud. So we've got the migration to cloud. So seamlessly move VM workloads to the cloud. And I think one of the points Andy made earlier was really, really crucial is being able to move them back out again or to a different cloud. So, you know, the, the whole ethos of cloud is to be open and, and available. Right. But we've gone down this route of trying to. Of, getting locked in again. We're locked into the services that AWS or Azure or any of the cloud providers use. And we're, and we're locking ourselves back into these, these places where we have no agility and no, no, no availability or no, no reason to be able to move. Whereas what we want to be able to do is move our workloads to the best possible place based upon our strategy. So being able to move workloads to and back from the cloud and between clouds if we wanted to as well. And then we've got you know, all of our disaster recovery use cases in the cloud as well. So disaster recovery to the cloud, disaster recovery for Kubernetes workloads in the cloud, and then disaster recovery within cloud as well, all fully automated, all fully orchestrated as well. So again, the, your, your investment doesn't have to be just a point solution to help you migrate to the cloud. That might be the entry point for Zerto. But then once you've migrated those workloads, you need to think how you're going to protect those workloads afterwards. And then how would you move them if you wanted to move them again? How would you move them to a different cloud or back onto on-premises again? So you really need to understand that type of thing as well. So I think that's it from me. One kind of thing for me. So if you want to experience Zerto for yourself, we have um, a Zerto free edition that launched last month. So this is 10 VMs, completely free, valid for a year. So you can try out migrations. You can try about recovering from ransomware, you know, get out of ransomware jail free with Zerto free edition. This is community supported as well. So you've got a great community out there to help to help you if you're getting stuck on anything with my Zerto forums and things like that. So if you want to use that, absolutely great. Feel free. There's some, there's, I'm sure Andy will put a link in the chat or we can, we can send you a link out with the, uh, with the recording as well. And then a couple of other things here. So we have the migration checklist as well. So again, the link's going to be in the chat for that. So if you're looking to do migrations in the future or, or just want to understand the processes of, of what you should be checking for migrations, there's a really good migration checklist that we've produced. There's also a Zerto white paper for Zerto for migrations, which contains a lot of the content that we spoke about today as well. There's a hands-on lab, so you can experience Zerto for yourself in an isolated environment with no infrastructure needed. Again, completely free of charge. And even in that lab, you can actually recover from ransomware. You can do a migration into the cloud if you wanted to. L lots of places like that, and lots of different labs and self-paced as well. So you know you don't have to just worry about going going quickly or, or anything else like that. You can do it completely guided in a lab environment. And then look at our Zerto TCO calculator as well to understand if Zerto for disaster recovery into the cloud or migration into the cloud makes sense for your organization. So Thank you very much. And um, I think we're going to be doing questions now, I think. And um, Andy, have you got any, anything you want to say? Absolutely, Chris. I really appreciate this. Um, I think one of the, the biggest values of you just mentioned, apart from breaking down the entire migration process, is there's nothing better than to look at it, look at how Zerto protects its information and to do it in a way where no marketing is involved. You can just try it, right? So I really urge everyone to take a look at that free edition. I think it's a big piece. It's not a migration edition. It's a protection edition that can really give you insights into how Zerto is able to deliver this experience. 
Now, Chris, we have a, actually a ton of questions, so this is good. Oh, great. Um, first, I'm going to start with a very obvious one. If mm -hmm. someone is not a Zerto customer, right, they're mm -hmm. approaching this for the first time, what are the licensing options? Uh, they want to perform a, a migration or they want to do both? Yeah, I mean, we've got a very simple licensing model, which is, again, is, is so easy to understand. So on a, on a per VM basis, so you, you essentially, you know, for every VM that you protect or migrate, it's 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 on a per VM um, costings. So our Enterprise Cloud Edition enables you to unlock everything we've spoken about today. So the DR, the protection, the ransomware resiliency, everything else you want to do with it. Um, so, you know, just not just for the migration, but for the protection afterwards as well. Um, but if you were just looking to use Zerto to migrate, we also have a migration one-time license as well, which is done on a per VM basis as well. So, you know, one-time use, kind of use it and lose it type of thing for migrations if you wanted to as well. Perfect. Thank you for that. So now I'm going to get into a couple of technical questions. You ready? <laughs> Absolutely. Tr try me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. <laughs> Do you still require access to the VMware host in order for your solution to work? Uh, yep. So if you're if you're replicating from the vCenter or from vCenter into public cloud, we'll still need access to the vCenter and the and and the, and the host. So our VRAs, our replication appliances, still access data inside of the hypervisor. That's how we achieve our RPOs and do our actual data migration. So yep, we still need access into there, but you can use you know limited access. So we have a list of um available sorry list, list of needed um permissions that you can set in a service account to just have those sets of permissions if you want to limit access perfect thank you the next one is how does zerto manage database transaction integrity for a transaction heavy application so in a migration um the the, the we shut down the virtual machine so at the point that the virtual machine the os is shut down the sql database is no longer running or, or high io a transaction machine is no longer running therefore for migration we have no problems at all um, for disaster recovery uh, and for for ransomware recovery it's slightly different obviously um, essentially everything is crash consistent in Zerto you know if we were if we're trying to pause the I at the I over the database every five seconds your your database would never get any work done so everything's crash consistent but um but most da databases that are ACID compliant are going to be completely fine with Zerto. Um, we have loads of customers who use it with um, with SQL and other um, databases and that such, um, and they're absolutely fine. They recover. They might do maybe a check or something. But because we've got potentially thousands of checkpoints in our journal um, that we could recover to, it gives you that option. So if, even if the one from five seconds isn't great and you and, and it's something has gone wrong for whatever reason, you can just go back five seconds more and find a point in time that you are happy with. Perfect. I actually answered this one, but I think it's good for the entire audience to get it. And you briefly covered it on your session, which is does Zerto support replication to multiple sites, specifically replicating to two sites, for example? Yes, absolutely. So we can actually replicate up to three different locations at the, uh, at the same time. So that's using our one to many replication that I mentioned earlier. So and they can be completely different and, and completely even different types of sites. So we can have a VMware site replicating to uh, AWS. Azure, and then a Hyper-V site on-premises as well. So you can have three different locations completely separate from each other, um, but, my, but uh, replicating at exactly the same time. And that's um, included in the license fee as well. So you only pay for the protected VM, not for how many replications you're doing as well. So even if you're replicating it to one or three locations, it's the same cost of that virtual machine as well. Perfect, and one of the important points about that too is that you know when we're even talking beyond migration, when we're talking about data protection, resilience, you know, some of the mm -hmm. challenges that we talked about at the beginning with ransomware is historically 321 has been a backup only yep. um, scenario, right? But when we're talking about being able to achieve 321 within DR with much more granular points, better RPOs and RTOs, that's mm -hmm. a value add. And we're not saying, you know, replace your backup. This is a include Zerto as your first line of defense and recovery. And you're augmenting that 321 rule to something much more resilient. So that's a great question that we pivoted into. Um, the other question I answered as well, but I think it's valuable for everybody else in the audience, Chris, is does Zerto take application aware snapshots for replication or is it crash based snapshots? So, so I mentioned it a minute ago, the, the majority of the um, checkpoints in the journal are going to be crash consistent. There is an option inside of Zerto, if you wish, to be able to take a VSS compliant checkpoint. So if you did want to do that on a, on a, on a semi-regular basis, you know, maybe once an hour or something like that, there is an option to be able to do that using the VSS plugin. But I would probably say that it's, it's not that popular inside of Zerto customers because everyone thinks they need that. And then once they try it without it, they realize that Zerto does a great job as it is without it. But there is the option if customers do want that, um, uh, that option available. 
Perfect. Here comes a good one to carry. Um, you seem to use migration replication interchangeably. I'm familiar with Zerto replication for DR. Does it do migration also, example like plate spin? Um, it, it does migration, but but not like plate spin. <laughs> so, so it uses pretty much the exact same methodology. Um, so the, the exact same replication um, methodology, so the CDP, the continuous data protection that Zerto is famed for, that's being used for the migration. And actually the migration piece of it um, with Zerto is essentially just a different orchestration and automation flow within the within the software. So the setup, everything else is identical for a migration that it would be for DR, um, except you just click a, a separate button. You know, instead of clicking failover and doing a failover test or a failover live, you click the move button and therefore um, we kick off a slightly different workflow. As I mentioned earlier, so we shut down the virtual machines, replicate the last few seconds of IO to, min to, uh, so to guarantee zero data loss rather than five second RPO. We, we do a zero RPO for moves and migrations. Um, and then essentially we move those virtual machines across for you, power them up exactly like you would in a live failover. Um, and then we, but then we do get to keep the source VMs if we wish as well. So it's kind of a, the best of both worlds, really. We, we're able to do it for disaster recovery, but also for migrations in exactly the same way, just a slightly different workflow tweak. Perfect. And I think, so we got a lot of questions from, a lot of really good questions from Rupin. So I really appreciate that because these are awesome. Um, this one's not a migration question, uh, okay. Chris. Uh, it's a DR question, but it's very valid. And it's one that we love, right? And that's testing. So the question is, does Zerto support non-disruptive DR testing? DR tests while the protected site apps are still running. For example, bringing up the app in an isolated network at the DR site. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's one of our famed use cases as well. So um, everything from install all the way through to disaster recovery testing, everything that we do at Zerto is without production impact. So we don't re we don't have production impact through installation, no reboots or anything required for install, um, for, for selecting virtual replication groups through to actually replicating the data, there's no production impact. And that stretches all the way through to doing disaster recovery testing as well. So I th it's exactly the same workflow for doing DR testing than you are doing for migration testing. So you're doing a failover um, test event. So you can then spin that up on an isolated network away from production. And obviously you don't want to have the same virtual machines on a production network in two places at once, because obviously that can cause problems, right? So we put on an isolated network for you away from it. So you can test how long things take to stand up, make sure the apps came up in the right order. So make sure the SQL machine booted first and it came up with the app server and then the web server on top of that. So absolutely 100% non-disruptive. Um, and I would employ anybody to do a lab or download the free edition and try it for yourself because when I started using Zerto, I didn't believe it was true until I, until I started doing it. Perfect, thank you. I have a couple of questions that are following that same track. And so after we talk about the ER tests and whether we're replicating or migrating, is there automation built in to Zerto for IP address change, right? To the VMs on the recovery side, for the OS at least? Yes, absolutely. And that, and that stretches through, um, not just for vSphere environments, so yes um, to both. So if you and also into public cloud as well. So yet we can orchestrate the IP address changes for you. So we can actually make sure that the the VMs come up on the right compute on production grade storage straight away. So no additional steps needed to then you know migrate them on from a, an appliance onto onto production grade compute or storage. We can put those straight in. We can put them on the right networks on a per VM basis and on a per NIC basis, do our re-IP re addressing as well for you. So we can pretty much end-to-end -end do your migration in a fully automated and orchestrated manner. Perfect, thank you. Um, the other piece is a very interesting one too. These are continued follow-on questions. Can the <laughs> migration plan, oh, I love it. Can the migration plan or recovery plan execution allow for the manual pause to allow for manual process steps to be completed and then continue resume with the plan? Yep, so inside of Zerto, we have the ability to um, do pre and post um, failover scripts, essentially. So inside of that script, you can make it extensible as you like. So you can reach out to any of your systems to do whatever you need to do, right? So obviously, Zerto can't integrate into every single other platform on the planet, right? It can't go into every single ITSM tool you have or ticketing system or whatever other workflows on, and tooling you have. So essentially, we, we leave our API open so you can script things from Zerto with our API or PowerShell, whatever you wish. But then you can also let Zerto trigger those scripts for you if you wanted to. So if you were trying to yeah, pause something and wait for a certain period of time, you can do that on a pre um, script and put a pause in there. And then once that script is finished in the pausing, it will then carry on 
to do the migration afterwards. So yes, absolutely, fully extensible. Perfect, thank you. Does Zerto use any sort of WAN or LAN optimization software behind the scenes to make better use of the network? Uh, yep, so we have one optimization built into the software, which is a you know, compression, so compre it compresses before before we send um, across the network. So um, you can either use our built-in one optimization, which again comes as part of the software, um, or if you have your own, so if you had like a riverbed or something along those lines, you can turn ours off and use theirs equally, um, up to, completely up to you. Um, but yeah, built into the software um, as standard and, and turned on by default as well. Perfect. The other one is what network is the replication happening? Is this management data, SCSI? Um, so configurable essentially. So it won't it doesn't happen at the storage layer, so it won't be over the SCSI network or iSCSI networks. Um, essentially you configure the virtual replication appliances um, inside on side your in your virtual environment to be connected to whatever port groups you want them to be um, connected to. And then when they're connected to that um, that network, we'll then use that for the replication. So it's configurable, so you can choose, but it's an IP-based uh, protocol. Perfect. I have another one here, and this is a fun one. When well, you mentioned, me me. I there's so many questions, man. When, <laughs> when you mentioned K8 migrations or Kubernetes migrations, yes. are you assuming it's running on top of VMware or Hyper-V, or can Zerto replicate data from bare metal servers? So it can replicate. So so uh, we didn't have time to kind of cover it in detail today, which is a shame. But um, so Zerto for Kubernetes is purpose built inside of Kubernetes. So we can re we could, we doesn't have to be sat on um, VMware Hyper V. So we're actually protecting it in a different way. We're not protecting or replicating the data um, using the underlying virtual infrastructure. So if you had you know, VMware Tanzu, for instance, we're not actually inside of the VMware layer of that. We're inside the Kubernetes layer of that, right? So we actually intercept the um, I/O instead of at the hypervisor level, like we do with VMs. We intercept it inside of the Kubernetes storage layer, right, inside the driver. So that we can do. That's why we don't have to be. Um, we don't have to be on the virtual side. That's why we can do things like EKS or Azure Kubernetes Service or Google or Kubernetes Engine. We can do um, replication and, and migration between all of those as well because we sit inside of the Kubernetes estate rather than um, on the actual backend storage platform or at the virtualization layer. Perfect. Um, one of the questions that I received here as well, and, and we're getting more and more questions, is um, <laughs> how, what is the requirement to receive the Zerto Free Edition license? There is no requirement. So if you have a work domain, if you have a home lab, whatever it is that you're trying to use it for, you can simply download it. Once you go on the site, register usual information. In about four to five minutes from there, you'll get an automated email with the license key and the download link and you can start protecting up to 10 vms and you can do what you want with them really um obviously these aren't meant to be supported by zerto this is community support we don't recommend you using this to protect your production level applications this is really your ability to test to see zerto for yourself without any strings attached um, with that, we're running out of time here. We have a lot more questions. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure I get everyone's email or everyone's contact, contact information. And we're going to be able to give them uh, all your answers to these questions with attached resources. Um, but I do really appreciate the interest. Amazing questions. I thank you all. This presentation will be available on demand. The slides will be available. And we'll make sure to address each of the remaining questions for you. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Thank Chris. You, everybody. Thanks, Andy.